what we have here is the burrow of a Eurodacus Shashinkoi, an inland burrowing scorpion. Quite a large scorpion, probably about 90 millimetres would be a maximum size for them. They're found from northwestern Western Australia, right through Central Australia, down here into the Riverland area in South Australia. And this area here is pretty much about as far as they get south and east. And that's because this type of soil just simply runs out and their reliance upon this, this soil. The interesting thing to note about the burrow of this species is that the, the entrance acts as a trap aid. It sort of aids the scorpion in catching, in catching its prey. And the reason is that this scorpion is a sit and wait predator. So it doesn't roam around. It just sits here in its burrow at night as a jumping spider. There he goes. Another undescribed species. So as I was saying, the scorpion sits here at night and it waits for something to go past. And you can see the way it's built this pile of soil up out here. And this is this entrance area is very, very steep. And so this acts to aid in the scorpion dragging the burrow, dragging the, the prey, I should say, back down the burrow. And so what the scorpion does, as it sits here, you can actually detect vibrations in the ground. Scorpions are capable of detecting vibrations. So when the scorpion notices vibrations out here, so, that, so in some ways this area here is a bit like a spider's web. The scorpion detects it, and based on that detection, it, it, it can tell how far away roughly the prey is, um, and it can tell what direction it's, it's coming from. So it'll race out, it'll grab the prey item, and it will drag it back. And of course, once it gets into the steep section, whatever prey item it's grabbed is going to have a great deal of difficulty in trying to fight against the scorpion and try to get up against this loose, steep gradient. And it looks like it's probably more than 45 degrees, it could be 50 to 60 degrees. It's actually quite steep. Where's that jumping spider gone? I think he jumped away. Oh, there he is. It's one of these little desert adapted long leg three jobs. They're quite common around here at the moment. One of the things you'll notice if you come into the habitat where Eurodacus Shishenkoi lives is the density. They are absolutely incredibly common in their habitat. Even though, as I said, this habitat here is very much borderline. This is not the perfect sort of place for them. But where I'm standing, you probably can't see them, but there's one here. There's one here, which is probably only three quarters of a meter away. There's another one here that'll be about the same distance. There's another one right here that looks to be quite a large burrow. Then in the foreground, I can see one here and one here. There's another one over there. And then down here where the ground is a little bit harder, in the sort of runoff area, there are no burrows. That's what I mean by borderline. They really have to concentrate out in these areas where the soil is softer. If you go to a place, the habitats, which is the triodia habitats, the sandy triodia habitats, and you look for them there, they can just be absolutely thick on the ground. Absolutely everywhere, incredibly common. And I don't know whether historically that's always been the case. I would think that there are far less insectivorous marsupials in existence today than there would have been in the past. And so possibly they aren't being preyed upon by insectivores to the degree they would have been in the past. I don't know, that's speculation. I don't know if that's true. But one of the things that I want to point out here is that 
in the distance which is downhill this is like the top of a, a very ancient dune I suppose it's just like a, a, a ridge at the moment probably weathered away but this is a sand ridge and there are lots and lots of these sand ridges that run parallel with each other across this country and in between the sand ridges you have a clay content high clay content soil which has a lot of blue bush in it and these scorpions will not be found in that blue bush area in that in that hard ground area and the reason for that is that the soil down there is very fine the particle size of the soil is, is very very much smaller than the particle size of the soil found in this this sand this is very much a loose sand whereas down there I couldn't do that it would be like rock and what we've found is that these scorpions will dig down into the ground to a particular moisture content and they can actually extract water from the soil by osmosis. It's an amazing adaptation. Okay, so I'm going to have a go at digging this one up so that I can show you in this video what these scorpions look like. More than likely this will be a young one. At this time of the year most of the burrows that you see are going to be juveniles. These burrows are notoriously difficult to dig up. Uh, what's that one? Argotinus. Um, very very difficult to dig up because they Scorpion digs like a, a part of the burrow is similar to that of a spiral staircase. It's an it's a incredible spiral section. We call it the spiral section. For that reason, you can see that's probably where it turns here. Now, this is probably going to be entirely entrance chamber. And because it's so long, that suggests to me this is a juvenile. The burrow structure changes as, as they get older. And when they're young, they produce this very long entrance chamber. So, if you're a, a hungry goanna, there's no way in the world that a goanna is going to dig one of these things up that I, I, I have never seen any evidence of it. And goannas, without a doubt, dig up spider burrows, miglamorph spiders, you know, trapdoors, and um, wishbone spiders. They dig those up without any problem at all because they dig straight burrows maybe a bit of a curve at the bottom but these scorpions produce this spiral staircase situation and it's the soil just falls down into it and fills it up I think my theory is that the spiral burrow the spiral section of the burrow is there to reduce water loss from the burrow because it acts as a trap now whether that's true or not, I've got a funny feeling I saw the burrow down there. You can't see it probably, but right down here. The thing about these kinds of habitats in the sand is that there are so many things digging in it that while you are digging your burrow up, you can come across lots and lots of other burrows that are probably just used. The goannas could dig these up. There will be a lot of fat goannas around here. Notoriously difficult to dig up. As I'm finding here, the soil is just collapsing straight back into the into the burrow, filling it up, making it just about impossible to relocate. Especially as it as it as it's turning at the same time, so you don't know which direction it's turning in. I 
one's quite deep this one's going to be that's probably over 400 now and that might be due to this fact that this country here is as I said before not really the right sort of habitat where I've taken measurements it's been a lot sandier than this so it might mean the scorpion has to go deeper to get to the right sort of um, moisture content and I'm sure the scorpion can detect the particle size they have hairs on their legs which are spaced according to the particle size believe it or not so if you get a scorpion that lives in a coarse soil there's a large spacing between the hairs and a scorpion that lives in a fine soil the spacing between the hairs is a lot smaller and the reason for that is that they they actually catch the particles between these hairs as they're digging the burrow out it's sort of like a sand rake So they have a long gestation period of 18 months, long developmental period, about four and a half years. So all up, generation time is about six years. And quite long lived, the adults can live for quite some time. I think there's a record of one of these being in captivity for something like 20 years. So quite an amazing scorpion. They look very much like the adults at this stage, but they just don't have as much darkness in their cuticle. They're a lot paler overall. And you can see this one's quite healthy, the body on it is quite robust, quite fat looking. He's well fed and probably won't be too long and this scorpion will block off and um, remain dormant for the rest of winter. So what I'll do is I'll create a hole in the ground like an entrance chamber for him with an iron bar and a, and a bit of a mallet, I'll knock a hole in the ground, put him in there, cover him over with some leaf litter and in one night he'll dig out most of a new burrow. Um, which is energetically insignificant. Studies have shown that the cost of building a burrow for one of these scorpions is absolutely minimal and they can do it very, very quickly. They're very, very efficient burrowers.